Uh, first game up, we are headed over to the streets of Brooklyn in this one. We do have the Brooklyn Nets getting four and a half points at the house versus the Philadelphia 76ers in this one. Land four and a half on the road. If you would like to go the money line route, you could get minus 190 with the with the away favorite in the Philadelphia 76ers here. Or you can get back plus 163 if you'd like to go with the Brooklyn Nets to get the outright win in this one. Over and under sitting at 210 in this one, um, guys. Uh, Ski, what do you think here? Do you think that the Nets have any chance? Obviously, this is this game three. This is the desperation spot right here if they're going to win a game. Um, do you think that the Sixers are are just too much for them and they take uh, get, take a sweep here or do you think the nets uh come out here with some with some sort of desperation here ski yeah, it is desperation mode right so you you should get the max effort from them early in the game at least probably throughout the game um i just don't have a lot of confidence in this team to be able to compete like they've shot really well the first game um you, I, I just don't know how much better they can play it's just simple as that. So I, I don't feel confident enough to take them out. I only look at the 76ers side. I'm happy with the bet that I made, you know, pre-series as far as under five and a half games. Um, the total is pretty interesting to me. I think if the Nets are going to win this game, they have to try to play, like, faster. They got to take advantage of the Sixers' defense before they get set because they're not that great of an offensive team. So if they play with some kind of pace and the Sixers kind of return that, I can see them getting over this low two, what, 209 half, 210 number. So that would probably be the way I lean right now, either Sixers or the over. Yeah, hey, this it is a pretty low total. That last game, it didn't matter if the total was so low. We know our guy Josh Cash with the under and that one. Um, it, that that pace was really uh, slow and that. But I do agree with you, Ski. If the Nets, they better try to push the pace in this because as soon as you let the Sixers get uh, set up in their half court um, defense, man, that's it's over for them unless they're gonna let Cam Johnson and then we're gonna come out here hot from three in this one. Um, the only way I can look in this game is Nets in the first quarter, absolute desperation spot. Um, I do not bet against desperation spots. I either just uh, bet that or I stay off the game and. This one, our guy Josh says he doesn't care. He says this is a sweep right here. Sixers finna smack these boys up. It does, he doesn't care. Going to Brooklyn, it doesn't matter. This team is just too much for the Nets in this one, Josh. How you looking at this game, my brother? Yeah, you said it all, man. I don't have to add anything to that. The, the Nets just can't compete. It's a complete mismatch of a series. Um, and it's unfortunate for Brooklyn, but uh, that's the reality when you make such a big trade midseason and a team who had already accumulated so many wins still finds a way to sort of finish far higher than what the team is actually capable of over the course of a full 82 game season. I mean, this is a team that would have been in the plane at best, and I don't think personally would have made the playoffs. So, um, you know, for them to be matched up against a Philadelphia 76ers team, I think we're seeing the difference in the golfing class because you look at game two as well. They were basically flawless. They were almost perfect. Their defense was fantastic. Their switch defense was on point. Their double teaming on Embiid was perfectly timed. They mixed it up well. They executed it well. Uh, offensively, you know, they spaced the floor well. They started off shooting red hot. Cam Johnson couldn't miss. Um, you know, the shot quality numbers were all high. And yet, you look at the score at the end of the game, and it was an absolute no contest down the stretch. And I think uh, that kind of just reflects what we're going to see for these next two games, where I think the Nets... They'll do what they have done basically to the series uh, for this series to date, which is be competitive, be feisty in the early stages. But down that stretch of that game, they just don't have the shot uh, shot making. They don't have the playmaking, and they definitely don't have the talent to keep up with a team led by Embiid and, and the way that the 76ers are able to execute. So, uh, for me, I have Philly covering this spread. I think it should be a bit higher, five and a half. It, it's rare to get much of a numbers edge anyway in playoffs. It's all more about matchups for me. And like I said, this one just a complete mismatch on paper and on the court at the moment. So I took the 76ers minus four and a half. I took a Brooklyn Nets team total under, which I've taken so far in this series every game. I'm going to keep writing that as well. Again, the same sort of thing where this is a team that just doesn't have enough shot making in them to keep pace with the 76ers side. And looking at how the Philadelphia is able to control tempo, average time of possession for Philadelphia almost 21 seconds per possession they are absolutely taking the air out of that basketball and slowing this thing down so that even if the Nets try and return serve they absolutely wrestle back momentum instantly if they get a stop so I think that's just the way the series continues to play out largely because I just don't think Brooklyn has any pieces to make any notable adjustments there so Nets team total under Philly minus four and a half for me in this one
Yeah, no, it's a great points right there, man. Yeah, but yeah, that's a good point. Uh, the Nets, the, like you said, they came out there and did it first quarter, first half, and last game. It's just it's it's one of those differences where, where like kind of taking some quarters where you're honing in on a certain uh, little sample size. Whereas over the full court, full forty eight minutes, I always say the better team wins, right? So uh, would be a bit surprised to see the Sixers. I mean, they they even with a bad game last game, it's just kind of like they can sleepwalk through the first half and still just wake up at just the right time. Like, all right, come on, let's go win this game here. Or just it's just the amount of uh, when they want to do it there, Josh. So could not talk you off in that one. I do lean Nets in the first quarter in this one. No absolute desperation spot. Uh, these are that's just how I bet the playoffs right there. I want the more motivated team, and if they could show that they could do it um, on the road as well, I definitely think they come out at the house with something. I hadn't bet it, man, but I do think Nets in the first quarter on the money line is the right look here. Our guy Josh is rocking with. Now I got a question for Ski real quick. Uh, Ski, do you think this is gonna be a sweep? Before the series, I said that the Nets would win one game. And, you know, I, it should be this game that they win, but I wouldn't even be surprised if the Sixers win this one. And then uh, then the Sixers just, you know, come out last of days ago and then finish them up at home. So I, I still think the Nets can sneak one out. That's why I didn't bet it myself. Yeah, no, I'm right there with you. If, I always say if there's going to be a game, the game three is definitely the top desperation spot. Uh, Josh says, no, this is this is a sweep right here. All the way. Our guy Josh, <laughs> rocking with Sixers, uh, minus four and a half, and he's also taking Nets. Team total under 102 and a half in this one, guys. Can I talk about it? And Josh said, hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I've been doing this the whole series. I'm going with it here once again. I love the thought process from my guy Punt over there, man. And, hey, the punter taker, he has to take an under. You see what I'm saying? It's my guy right there.